May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. Your Excellency, my dear brothers in the priesthood, religious brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus our Lord and Savior reassures us, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. His words. With faith and gratitude, we gather at this solemn Eucharistic convention on this Friday in Easter week to inaugurate our Diocesan Eucharistic Convention. The Paschal Mystery is the mystery of the suffering, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, he destroyed our death. Rising, he restored our life. In this Easter celebration, therefore, we profess our hope in the risen Christ. We rejoice that the Holy Eucharist brings us salvation. We are led to show deep reverence to the Holy Eucharist. And we pray the Lord that the Holy Eucharist may renew our lives. These will now be the points for our reflection. And first, our hope in the risen Christ. Christ is risen. Suffering and death have no more power over him. Those who opposed him or who plotted against him are thrown into confusion, as we heard in the first reading of this Mass. Peter and John courageously testified before the Supreme Council of the Jews that Jesus is the Savior, the only Savior. For of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one by which we can be saved. There is no other Savior. He is the one who is to come. We are not to wait for another. This is the stone which was rejected by the builders, but which has become the cornerstone. This is the risen Jesus who appeared to the apostles at the Sea of Galilee, just as read now in the Gospel. At his word, they threw their net in the sea after a whole night of having caught nothing. And now they netted in fish in abundance, 153, all types of fish known at that time, symbol of all humanity that worships the Lord in the church, which Christ was entrusting to St. Peter and the apostles. This is the Jesus in whom we believe and hope. It is he who gives us the ineffable gift of the Holy Eucharist, sacrifice and sacrament. He said to the doubting Thomas, do not be faithless, but believing. Jesus could say the same to us today with reference to the Eucharistic mystery. Jesus is with us, not only in the liturgical celebrations, in the sacraments, in the word of God proclaimed in church, in the priest minister, and in the congregation of the baptized. He is present to us in all those ways, but he is especially present in the Holy Eucharist. In the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, the Council of Trent teaches us, the body and blood, together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore the whole Christ is really, truly, and substantially contained. This is our faith. We gratefully and firmly profess it. This Eucharistic Congress loudly proclaims it and invites us to love it and to live it. The Eucharistic Jesus brings us salvation. 
Jesus redeemed us by his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. He instituted the church, his church, one church, not two, not three, not 500, to be the ordinary way of salvation for all. In this church, he gave us his word and his sacraments, and also the service of the magisterium or the teaching authority of the church, so that we know what to believe, what not to believe, what to do, what not to do, in order to make a success of our life on earth, which is just once, no second trial. The greatest of the sacraments is the Holy Eucharist, where Christ is not just acting, but where he is truly, really, and substantially present. Jesus invites us to receive him in the Holy Eucharist so that we may have life, so that the graces of Easter may fully work in each of us. He tells us, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. St. Ignatius of Antioch calls the Holy Eucharist the medicine of immortality. If you receive Christ and stay in that good state, you will have eternal life. No doctor could prescribe such a medicine, only Christ. We come to Jesus in the Holy Eucharist so that we may have life and have it abundantly. Those who prepare themselves well by repentance and the reception of the sacrament of penance when necessary, these people receive Jesus in the state of grace. They will grow in the life that Jesus brings us. Over the offerings in the Mass of today, the Church begs God to bring to perfection the spirit of life we receive from these Easter gifts to free us from seeking after the passing things of this life and to help us to set our hearts on the kingdom of heaven. We are not told to despise the things of this life because God has given us to them and everything God has made is good. But we are to use them in such a way that we will reach eternal life so they don't have permanent value. But as means, yes. As objects in, in which we place our hearts, no. In the Holy Eucharist, a pledge of the life to come is given to us, an anticipation of heavenly glory. Whenever the church celebrates the Eucharist, she turns her gaze to him who is to come. The church celebrates the Eucharist, awaiting the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. When a Catholic is sick unto death, we call the priest to anoint the person, to dispense the person God's pardon, and especially to bring that person the Eucharistic Jesus, the viaticum for the final journey. We would want everyone to live a hundred years or even 120. But we know that there is a time when the doctors will say, we have done our best. You better prepare your luggage now. The Holy Eucharist accompanies us on our last journey. Let us therefore approach Jesus in the Holy Eucharist so that we may have life initially in this world, permanently in the next. The Holy Eucharist is our ticket, our boarding pass to eternal life. We must reverence our Savior in this wonderful sacrament. God is holy, three eyes holy. As Isaiah the prophet says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. God is transcendent. He is our creator. We are his creatures. He is not just a guy over there. He is our creator. Because of this, we owe God adoration, 
praise, thanksgiving, reparation for our sins, and also supplication, begging him for what we need. Jesus Christ is the second person of the most blessed trinity. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us, the Catholic Church has always offered and still offers to the sacrament of the Eucharist the cult of adoration, not only during Mass, but also outside it, reserving the consecrated hosts with utmost care, exposing them to the solemn veneration of the faithful and carrying them in procession. This is our faith. The Holy Eucharist is a sacrament that continues. It does not finish after Mass. Therefore, we have Jesus in the tabernacle. We show this deep veneration to Jesus in the Holy Eucharist in many ways, by genuflection, by prostration, in Eucharistic adoration chapels without caring about what others will say, by deep bow, by kneeling in silence and recollection, and a respectful way of dressing when we come before the Lord. In a word, in a world often dominated by noise, including organized noise, which some call music, in such a world, not the music we have here today. This is prayerful music. But there is music which is dangerously coming near to organized noise. In such a world, it is not superfluous to stress the importance of reverential silence in church. Silence is a commodity getting more and more rare in the market and especially in the supermarket of today. It is sad to see some Catholics, not in New Zealand. I arrived only yesterday, so I don't know your country. But the world is big, and it is sad to see some Catholics, hopefully not in New Zealand, who chat in church as if they were in a football stadium or in a theater or even in a boxing match. We also show reverence and faith towards Christ in this sacrament by visits to the Blessed Sacrament, by the Holy Hour of Adoration, by perpetual adoration where possible, by benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, by Eucharistic processions, congress, and conventions. Why not? It is a necessary consequence of our Eucharistic faith. So to conclude, Christ in the Holy Eucharist renews our lives. The Second Vatican Council describes the Eucharistic celebration, that is the Mass, as the fount and apex of the whole Christian life. The high point, higher we don't have. The only thing the church has which is as great as a Mass is another Mass. If we accept Christ's invitation to come to him in this ineffable sacrament and sacrifice, he will renew our lives. In the collect of the Mass of today, the Church prays the Eternal Father who gave us the Easter mystery as our covenant of reconciliation that the new birth we celebrate may show its effects in the way we live. The Eucharistic celebration should be the center of our day, our week, our life. It should be allowed to pour its rays on the details of our daily life, Monday, Tuesday, every day. We should not be like Paddy Smith. Now, Paddy Smith is not from New Zealand, no. But of him it is said, Paddy Smith always went to Mass. He never missed a Sunday. But Paddy Smith went to hell for what he did on Monday. <laughs> because for Paddy Smith, religion is simply 
one hour on Sunday morning. After that, stop. On Monday, Tuesday, up to Saturday, you wouldn't believe it was the same Paddy Smith. When you see him as a dock worker, or a taxi driver, or a medical doctor, or a lawyer, or an academician, you wouldn't believe it was the same Paddy Smith we saw on Sunday, singing beautiful hymns composed by St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Bonaventure. The Holy Eucharist should spread its rays and powerful influence throughout our day, our week, our life, our professions. We learn not only to offer Christ to God the Father, but also to offer ourselves through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ. We learn to live the Eucharistic celebration and its injunction to translate into our daily life what we have received, what we have heard of the Word of God proclaimed, preached, meditated, sung, and prayed. By the intercession of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Savior, and Woman of the Eucharist, as Venerable Pope John Paul II calls her, may this Eucharistic convention bring all of us lasting grace in faith and daily engagement in the apostolate. To Christ our Eucharistic Lord be honor and glory forever and ever.